Hello engineers, uh, this is just a very quick video talking you through making the lamp for the unit two practical unit. Now, due to current constraints, what we're gonna do is instead of making a double stem lamp like you would have done in the past, so with two uprights, two locking mechanisms, etc., we're gonna do a slightly smaller version with single stem lamp with only one locking mechanism one locking mechanism and one angle bracket instead. So we're gonna do a slightly different version of the lamp, but it still features a lot of the same processes that you would have used to do the actual lamp. And the drawings and everything that you use will reflect this newer lamp like so. So I'm gonna take you, this is a very quick video, just to take you through the processes in order to make this, because you have to show that you can plan engineering processes. And the way you do that is by writing up how to do it. So I will take you through a video on how to do this and you can write these down. So we're now going to cut the single stem for your lamp. So we've got some aluminium rod here, like that. We're gonna measure this out using the steel rule. So the required length. I'm gonna leave it a little bit longer because I always take it down on the lathe after. So I'm gonna leave it a little bit longer. We're gonna put it into the metal work devices like so, but Obviously the metal work vice will might mark our aluminium because aluminium it's quite soft. So we might use something like some leather just to wrap around the aluminium and then we can place it in the vice without damaging our aluminium when we put it in there to hold it in place. So I'm gonna measure and mark it using a scribe, tighten that like so. And then I'm gonna cut it using either a junior hacksaw or a full size hacksaw depending on which you're more comfortable with. I'm gonna cut it like so, point to my finger, trigger grip, like that. Being very weary, this is gonna get quite hot and quite sharp as I cut that there. I've now laser cut the parts for our lamp. So I have the circular base, the single hole in the middle, which is a four millimeter hole. That's gonna be the base of the lamp. I then have the top of the stem with another four millimeter hole like so. And then I have the two parts, which are gonna be the uh, lamp shade parts or the end of the lamp or the end of the arm. I laser cut these at 100% power, 2% speed, which is the recommended setting for acrylic. And as you said, as you can see, they've given me a really nice cut like so. I could peel the protective plastic off and use these for my lamp. I've also now laser cut the other three parts for the lamp as well. These are going to be, these are slightly thicker, so this isn't three mil acrylic, this is actually uh, six mil acrylic, like so. Now these are going to be, so this longer piece here is going to go as a spacer here on the arm. I've then got a middle part, which is going to go as a spacer, so if you can see that here, so that's going to go from there. And then I've got the other spacer, which goes on the end underneath the lampshade here, like so. So that's the spacer there. It's been laser cut with a hole, but the hole obviously is not threaded yet to be able to take a screw. So that's the next thing we're gonna to need to do. I now need to tap a thread in the acrylic, like so in the acrylic spacer, so that it's able to take a grub screw like so from both sides. So I've got a single piece of acrylic. I've got a four mil tap because it's going to be able to take a four millimeter grub screw like so. So I set up the tap like so. These have been laser cut with 3.3 millimeter holes. That's the perfect size to tap a four millimeter hole. Now what I'm going to do is when I place this on the hole like so, I'm going to turn this clockwise and I'm going to do a half turn stop and a quarter turn back. So I always do a, a half turn, so all the way around like that, and then a quarter turn back, then a full uh, half turn and a quarter turn back, working my way down all the way through the two holes like that. I can then test that they are threaded by testing it with this, the grub screw, that the grub screw actually tightens up into the acrylic. I've now cut the aluminium rod to the required shape, uh, the required size for the, step of the lamp stand. As you can see, the stem, the end of the stem here is a little bit rough where it's been cut. So we need to face this off on the lathe. So I'm going to place the rod in the chuck of the lathe like so. Obviously the lathe, the lathe isn't on for safety reasons. 
I've then got a chuck key, which I'm then gonna place into the chuck like so, and tighten that up nice and tight so that cannot come out. I make sure that I never leave the chuck key in the chuck. Obviously, if this starts like, we to fly out, and that would be a massive risk, so we'd never do that. Sometimes we can get chuck keys with a spring, which is spring-loaded, and that stops it from being able to be kept into the, uh, the chuck. But this particular one isn't, so we make sure that that always goes out the way, like so. What I'm then gonna do is I've got the tool post here and the cutting tool, and then I'm then going to move this into location so that I can then, when this starts to turn, face this off so we leave a nice, smooth edge, like so. So we'll then go across the face of the aluminium, leaving a nice, smooth face. Once it's been faced off, you should see a nice, shiny flat surface to work with that's the end now that has been on the lathe i'm now going to pop it back into the lathe because what i need now need to do is add a hole here for to be able to take the screw to be able to screw the base and the other side needs to screw the top of the stem on okay so i've now placed a 3.3 mil drill bit into the end uh, the, the tailstock of the lathe and i've tightened this up now with the chuck key like so again making sure i take the chuck key out of the chuck for safety reasons, so I've now got the 3.3 mil drill bit set up. I've now used the 3.3 mil drill to drill into the end of the aluminium, like so. So I've locked it into place. I've moved this, slid this forward, slid the tailstock forward, locked it into place like so, wound this forward, and this basically winds this forward, and it goes into like that, so it will turn with the aluminium and then to the required depth that I want the hole to be. So I just loosen this off, pull the tailstock back, out the like so, and I have the hole I require there. I've now drilled both ends of the stem of the lamp, and I'm now going to tap a thread in both ends as well. So I've drilled the, the holes, making sure that the tap obviously is nice and straight, and so it's not gonna go at an angle. And I'm, I remember one half turn, quarter turn back, all the way down, so I'll be able to thread an M4 thread. So I now need to mark out the arms of the lamp. So I've got some aluminium here that I need to cut down to length. So what I've used is the engineering square and the scribe to mark it to size, and I've marked a line, if I can get that in focus, like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it down to size using either the hacksaw or the junior hacksaw. So I've measured it using the steel rule, Mark that line using the scribe and the engineer square, and I'm now gonna cut it down to size. So once you cut the arms down to size, you then need to file the ends down because they're gonna be a little bit rough once you've cut them. So using a file, we're gonna file down, making sure that we put the aluminium in the leather so it doesn't damage it, the teeth of the vise don't damage the aluminium. Using the file, you're going to file it down to the line on both ends and make sure both ends are smooth. Okay, so in the arm of our aluminium for our lamp, we now need to mark a notch. Now this notch is going to allow the end of the lamp to sit in it like so. So we're gonna use the scribe, the engineer's square, like so, to, and the steel rule to measure and mark out the notch. And we're going to mark out a notch that looks a little bit like that. We're then gonna cut this notch out using the hacksaw. So we're gonna cut down here, cut down here, they're staying off the line because we can always file down to the line after. We then need to mark out holes. So there's gonna be one, two, three, four holes per arm, making sure that we get the holes in the correct positions in line with the notch. So we measure and mark out where the position the holes are going to go using the steel rule to measure. I've used the dividers then to mark a center line down the center of our aluminium arm. I've then used a punch and a ball pin hammer to mark out the hole for or the alignment of where the hole needs to go for our lamp arm. We now need to use the pillar drill to drill the holes in, the, in our arms. So when we come to drill this, we've got a four mil drill bit here in the chuck. So we're going to place this uh, into a vise to hold it. We're not gonna, we never hold metal 
by hand and then drill it because if it binds, it's going to twist. So for health and safety reasons, we always put it in the vise, tighten up the vise, the vise holds it for us. Then we're going to green button for go, red button for stop, safety glasses and apron for safety. And then we're going to pull down nice and slowly and drill through our holes. So the next part we need to create is this knurled knob here, which allows the lamp to move up and down. So if I unscrew this here, you should be able to see you've got the knurled section here. That's the grip on the outside. And then we turn it down so this threads in like so. So we set up some aluminium going from the chuck here to the uh, tailstock, which will allow this to spin around like so. And then we've got the knurling tool here, which as you can see, spins around and you can then select whether you want quite a wide, thick grip on there or whether you want quite a tight uh, grip on your knurled end like so. And then we'll put it in the tool post like that. We'll tighten those up and then we will move it forward into the aluminium and get it to the correct speed, which is a nice slow speed. We'll start at the one end of the aluminium, like so, and then we'll work this across the face of the aluminium when it's touching, and the two tools, you can see here, they will turn, and as they crisscross, it creates that crisscross pattern onto the knurled end, like so. Once we've knurled the entire aluminium section, all the way across. We will then cut this down, we'll part it off, cut it down, uh, turn this down smaller. So we'll put this end in here, turn this down smaller, and then we will need to use a die to cut the thread onto here. In order to create the external thread on the knob here, this is the die. This is the die cutter says M4, so we know it's a four mil, which we need that to be, four millimeters. So we're gonna place that in the handle like so. There's a grub screw here to get the hole lined up with. And then we place this in here, tighten up the handle, wind those up, so that then we can place this on the end of here and turn this so we cut the thread of the knob like so. The next thing we're gonna to need to do is to create the angle bracket, which will go on top of the stem like so. So we've got our angle bracket here. This is a little bit wider and thicker and, and chunkier than this particular one. But you, as you can see, the inside, it would be really hard to mark lines on this inside. So what we're gonna do is spin this over using our engineer square like so. We're going, and the scribe, we're going to mark this, these lines out like so, like that. And then we're going to use our hacksaw to cut this off here like so. And then we're gonna to need to obviously file because our edges could be quite rough. So we're gonna file that down so we end up with a nice square corner, smaller piece. Once you've cut your angle bracket, your corner bracket, you're gonna to need to file the corners off so they're not sharp like that. And obviously we need to drill two holes, one that's gonna to connect to the uh, arm and one that's gonna to connect to the stem. And we're gonna go to drill that with a four millimeter hole in the pillar drill like we did before. So we're going to drill those two holes. So we now need to join these two parts. If you remember, we cut out the two parts, which is gonna be the lampshade here. We need to glue those together and we need to glue the last end part, which is gonna to bolt to the arm like that, we need to glue them together. Now to glue them, we're gonna use tensile cement. Now this is a very thin, you can see how liquidy that is, a very thin uh, liquid adhesive. And we apply it using a syringe because it's very accurate. And what we do is we just squeeze that in around the acrylic like so, all the way around so it joins those together. So they are now one solid part. So one of the last things we need to do is we need to countersink a hole in the acrylic here. Now what that means is we countersink the hole in the base underneath so that when we place our screw, which connects to the stem in here like this, it fits flat 
with the surface and that's that's been countersunk so you can see the head now should be should finish flat with the base so when we put the base onto the table like so it doesn't wobble around it's nice and flat like that because it has been countersunk